I'm going to paint a goldfish. It's it's smack dab in the center of the paper. I'm also going to be working with 11 by 14 paper. Um, I think the composition is bad because it's right in the center of the picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Photoshop and I'm going to manip manipulate the picture a little bit. So the first thing I need to do is uh, go and pick a background color for how I'm going to change it. Just um, what you need to do is you need to pick a color that is um, in the background and then I'm going to go to I think it's image and canvas size right and my paper is 11 by 14 which is great because th th this image is smaller than that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I want it to be a horizontal composition so I'm going to go 11 and then I'm going to go um, 14 and I want to put it in the lower left hand corner of the picture. So what I've done is I'm putting the picture in the lower left hand corner of an 11 by 14 thing and then I'm going to manipulate it till it becomes what I want it to look like. So this is larger than the screen. I'm going to uh, do fit on screen. And um, now what you can do is to change this or make it larger. You just draw a box around the part that you want to change using that box function in the upper left hand corner and then you go to edit um, free transform okay click on that and I like to lock the image so that it doesn't change sizes height and width and then you just pull it to how big you think it should be in the composition In that corner, it doesn't work for me. I think what I'd like to do is do something where it's in a sort of odd place. In the Oh, that's kind of cool. I kind of wanted it to look like it was swimming up, but um, in the lower left-hand corner. All right, well, that's the composition. All right. You know, see how it has rulers up here, 11, uh, 11 inches down here, 14 inches? Well, if you're working on a, a sheet of paper, that's 11 by 14. Uh, the easiest way to draw something is to put some some guidelines now. So this is since this is 14. What I did was oh, I didn't even show you how I did that. You take your cursor, you put it in the left hand side, and then you drag it across. And you can do this. You can print the picture out and put it on a, on a page too, and do the same thing. So I have a, a halfway mark for the page, and then um, which is seven, and then I need since it's 11, I need another halfway mark, five and a half. So now I've got these two marks that kind of give me an idea of where the center of the page is. And that's 11 by 14. Okay. Um, all right, so seven, seven, five and a half. Five and a half. All right. Uh, really lightly, you just drag it across so that it'll completely disappear. You don't press down at all. You just let the weight of the pencil do it. Okay. Now I've got a grid. If you can see that, there's a grid on the paper, and it's just going to allow me to do some things in terms of drawing the, uh, the goldfish. What I'm doing is I'm just giving myself an idea of where the elements need to go and I use this sort of grid and transfer so that I know where it falls within each of the, the shapes. It's actually too small, too large. Maybe shade it a little bit. This is graphite. And if you draw really lightly, all of these pencil lines will, will disappear 
when you start painting it. Okay, that's the idea of why I'm doing it uh, with this this pencil. You could even use pencil when you are painting um, an oil painting. So I'm just using the grid to more or less give myself some, uh, some of the organization to do a more detailed drawing underneath. Actually kind of cute the way its mouth is, isn't it? Now all of the techniques I'm doing in watercolor here are almost exactly the same techniques that you could do with oil. Um, oil just dries a lot slower and also oil has the benefit uh, of that you don't need to leave the white of the paper showing through in order to get the details. And uh, that's a kind of a, um, a virtuoso thing with watercolor is that you let the white of the paper stay wherever um, there is uh, <clears throat> white in the thing and you don't use like a heavy white uh, paint to do it. So now I have this sort of laid out. Um, my composition is actually a bit off um, because what I didn't realize was the uh, I got caught up in making it almost exactly the way it was. That's really pretty funny. It's in the center of the page. This isn't short enough here. Look at that. And then this also needs to go shorter, but it looks so cool long, doesn't it? But this should be shorter. I got, I'm gonna leave this this length, because I think it looks better. Okay, I'm gonna leave the drawing the way it is. Um, I just, the way the crosshairs are, there should be more space on top of these two wings. On the, on the fish, the fins, but I kind of like it, so I'm gonna keep it. Um, now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from back to fore, uh, I start on the background first. And um, the way to do a background is you need to really uh, understand what your colors are gonna be. So let's take a look at this in Photoshop. So if you've got uh, Photoshop, um, one of the things that you'll be able to do is you'll be able to manipulate the picture and change things about it to make it a little bit stronger for painting. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, image adjustments and then what I want to do is I want to work with levels. Uh, and what I'm talking about is I'm going to compress the light and the dark to a higher degree and try to pull out more middle tones. This is already kind of uh, edited very well. So if I push the lights up, see how it washes out the image? So I'm not going to do that. But what I can do is make the background a little bit darker to set off some edges. And, or I can just make the middle tones a little bit darker so I can see the colors a little bit more. Now the other thing is, this is actually pretty subtle uh, color for a photo. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. We're going to go to Image Adjustments. And then we're going to go to hue and saturation, okay? You click on that and it gives you some slider bars to play with. What I like to do is I want to make it more colorful, more saturated. So if you just push this, this bar to the right, see how much more orange and uh, gold it's becoming, okay? Um, and that's a good way to change it too. Now the next thing is since 
the photo is kind of blurry and some of the details are kind of messed up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to file and I'm going to save it as a copy. Um, you know, so I'll just call it Goldfish 2 and put it in, in my folder. And that way I, I'm going to make it a large file and I'm going to save it as my origin, as a different file than the original because I can always go back to the original then if I mess this one up. Filter, blur, and then go down here and this function called Smart Blur is great for painters because what it does is it generalizes the shapes and allows you to see what the big forms are. So I'm going to click on that and <clears throat> it did a little bit with this but it's too large. So I am going to, I don't want to see the, the grids anymore. So I don't want to see the, uh, the, those grids. And I also need it to be a certain size for Smart Blur to work. Um, so I'm going to undo it, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to image, image size. Because with Smart Blur, the image needs to be 72 dots per inch. And the maximum height for the setting that you, with Smart Blur kind of works is usually six or 700. I like 600 because it chunks things up really large. Okay, so I made the image smaller. I'm going to view, um, fit on screen. And then I'm going to go to that filter called Smart Filter under Blur and Smart Blur, okay? And I'm going to click on it and see how it changes the forms into something that looks kind of like a painting now? That makes it a lot easier. So the background needs some work. And what we have is a sort of underpainting of a... Um, it, it's flowing through some light greens and some blue greens. And this... They don't make these anymore. I got this in high school, believe it or not, um, more than 30 years ago. So <clears throat> this is a, a color wheel, the way it's set up. And if you look at the picture and you use the color sampling function, um, if I was to take a look at what this color is, you click on that and see how it's like a yellow-green there? Okay. Well, that's actually a yellow-green here. But now, what I want to show you also is, look over here, it's like a, a blue-green. And there are sort of combinations or in-between tones as well. And so if you're having trouble figuring out what the color is, you can always click on something. So look how red, um, orange this is. And then look how it changes as you move into the darker areas. Okay? So that's... If you're ever lost in figuring out a color, you can use this to figure it out. Which means that I have to use the yellow-green and I have to use a blue-green, so these two greens. Um, it also is very dark, and so uh, using black in it will help a lot too. So I'm going to show you how to paint the background. This is a super big uh, watercolor brush. I always buy factory seconds um, of things, but you can you can buy something else. And what I'm doing is I'm just wetting the paper along the contours of the goldfish. I'm letting it be really, really wet. Um, this water is actually water that I've used for the last couple of days to paint with, and. Um, it has a lot of pigment in it, and that's not a big deal. I like that, actually. Um, slightly larger brush, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse all the color that I have on this palette. This is all. This is my uh, cool palette. I use this for the cool colors, the blues and stuff like that. And then I also have another palette that I use this other plate for the warmer tones. Watercolor always dries um, lighter than when you apply it. So this may look really intense at first, but it's actually not as much as you would imagine. That's kind of one of the fun things about, um, it's like you're coloring between lines and stuff and trying to figure out where things go. And so one of the things about the background is it's probably the most fun part because you can let things blur in and out. 
I think one of the things about uh, images of fish is that uh, often the fins and stuff are sort of translucent and it feels a little bit like uh, some sort of material or some kind of um, yeah, some kind of cloth that's sort of flowing around. One of my teachers, Greenberg, we used to call him Greeny, used to say work the whole painting at the same time. And he was a really good watercolorist. He was also an excellent uh, oil painter. And so he sort of taught me that you should do as much as you can with whatever you have so that a lot of the colors kind of come back in and out of each other. And um, once I put some glazes of other colors on here, it's going to look a little bit different. I don't think the background is uh, is dark enough, and so I'm going to go back in and I'm going to probably do some more with it. Something that's kind of useful sometimes is a pipette that you can get at a drugstore, you know, just, uh, just to move water around. Because I'm going to do some things where I want uh, patches of dark colors. This is just a little bit of clear water that I'm putting on top to take off this layer so that I can float in some yellow into there as well.